So going back to the Ethernet roadmap, you can see, hey, look, there is uh, future developments that, uh, that's, that's on the horizon. So one thing is really what's next beyond, let's say, uh, 400 gig, you know, there's thoughts of uh, 800 gig, there's, depending on what uh, literature you look at, there's, you know, talks of uh, higher data rates beyond that, but one would expect naturally that maybe, you know, getting an 800 gig signal would be probably something that you'd want to work on from a standardization point of view as being the next big thing. Certainly there's higher speeds depending on the market that you're looking at, uh, certainly for both serially and, uh, and, and dual speeds, so therefore you expect to see the form factors, the optics that you're looking at today, you know, trying to drive to higher data rates going forward. But I'd say the immediate speed jump but relative to 400 would be, let's say, 800 on the client side. Certainly on the line side, we're seeing where today, as an example, if you look at our DCI uh, transmission system, you know, we're looking at 600 gig and we're looking at higher data rates uh, going forward um, in terms of what we do there. So that's a view from an Ethernet point of view. Um, we talked a lot uh, today about the the performance of the NPU and the bandwidth of the NPU uh, in, in increasing. We also look at you know, all the different curves and the different uh, optic form factors and how uh, we have seen over time where we have been able to get the power down while also get the performance out uh, through the line card. So if you're thinking about a line card today, that's like 3.x terabits or 64 or 6.4 terabits line card as an example. We're seeing where the optic form factor as an example where we are today with QSFP DD as an example, is going to be able to give us anywhere between 30, 30, 36 within that range in terms of number of optics you can fit on the faceplate. So essentially what, what you have is, you know, this is where we are today. This is, the best, the be this is the best that we're going to get right now in terms of getting the capacity out. So if you think of uh, the NPUs going to, I think, Mark, what did you say, 25? 25.6. 25.6, then certainly you're going to think, okay, what next? What happens next relative to these connectors, right? So can we get them smaller? Um, if not, if we can't get, get them smaller, then what's the next likely, likely step and where would we go from a form factor and a connectivity perspective? So certainly just kind of looking out in the industry, we kind of see where we are today. We have our board and we have our, our NPU, we have our pluggable optical module, and we see where there's this, these uh, diamonds are kind of showing us these different points of uh, power, where we're using power on, on, on the system because we may be doing some, uh, there's some, some connectors there. As an example, if we look at what the Kobo Consortium Industry uh, Consortium for Onboard Optics is looking at, is actually saying, hey, look, rather than having a transceiver on a faceplate, why don't I co-locate, why don't I move the optics, the connectivity in, inside the system, eliminate an, uh, a point of connectivity, so therefore leveraging onboard optics, so therefore you have a connector where uh, the, it's plugged onto your PCB, and then out you'll have, let's say, a fiber, a ribbon fiber coming out, and then you need to go patch those ribbon fibers onto a patch panel system somewhere. So the idea is that you'd have a lower power infrastructure, um, they'll have optimization around cooling, but then you're left with, okay, how do I now manage and how do I operationalize, let's say, you know, the ribbon optic coming out in terms of patch paneling, how do I map to the different systems? So therefore, depending on who, as your customer, depending on what portion of the network you're looking at, you may choose to look at this in a very, with a very different lens in terms of what you do going forward. But certainly we have to think about, okay, as the capacity increase on, on the NPU side, you know, what may be next. Um, the other piece of the industry is looking at is really more the integrated optics, so therefore our co-package optics, essentially where you see you're getting closer, so you'll see, we'll show you a picture of that in the, on, the, on the next slide, where essentially you're leveraging you know, uh, a, a co-package entity. So here what we're showing you is what the Kobo would look like is a connector that fit on the board. So think of the fact that now I wouldn't be able to plug out a transceiver if I have a bad port or anything along those lines. I'd take the whole module off and then insert the new thing. So therefore, this technology is actually being leveraged, onboard optics are being leveraged for, for system to system communication. If I'm building, let's say, a distributed router or something along those lines, you may see that there. But in terms of just your normal top of rack aggregation switch or let's say a core switch, you don't see that today from a switching point of view, but these high performance supercomputers, you may see that technology being leveraged there as, 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 as an example. But certainly as we look in that direction, we have to think about the operational aspect of things in terms of how we, how we design and how we operationalize the connectivity methodology. The co-package op package optics here, we're showing basically you, you have your NPU and your optics all packaged together and essentially you have a ribbon fiber coming off the actual switching chip itself. And essentially, you're, you're back from a connectivity point of view, similar to what the Kobo Optic is, is providing you. Certainly here that you're getting, some up, you're getting more optimization from a power consumption, 
from a cooling capability, from a system architecture, system design. Um, this is just a, an additional improvement. So there's one thought that maybe the next jump may be to here you know, for, for, for wider adoption. But just to give you some thought in terms of what might be coming, so from an operational point of view, okay, if you know to manage, like say, the ribbon fiber today, and you're doing a lot of breakouts, then you know, that's, that's certainly where, 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 where things are headed. I mean, earlier on, like 40 gig came out and customers were looking at 40 gig breakout, 40 gig into 10 gig. A lot of customers weren't necessarily that happy with in terms of how they manage that. Then they tried to stick to, in some cases, it's like, hey, look, you know what? I'm not gonna do a 10 gig breakout. I'm gonna reg leverage my regular SFP for 10 gig as an example, because they just weren't, weren't ready to, <coughs> to operationalize things. You asked a question about the ZR. Certainly the, the notion here is that, hey, look, you know, with the, uh, with a 400 gig, 400 gig ZR, the idea is that because we are leveraging coherent transmission, certainly we're gonna get 400 gig ZR within the QSFP DD form, form factor. So essentially what's, what, what, the, what, what, this, what, what, what one takeaway from this slide is like saying, hey look, all the technology we would have typically seen on the long haul on the transmission line side is now being on the client side. So there's a blurring of the lines between client and line side technology and essentially what I have is an optic and I can use it in various use cases. So I can use it for intra-building uh, intra connectivity or inter-building connectivity. Certainly, you will optimize around the cost. So therefore, as an example, a lower cost uh, uh, optic would be maybe a single color. I can't tune it. I can't, uh, therefore, there's no, there's no tunability there. If I'm looking for flexibility and, I, and I want to, I'm willing to spend money on the cost, then I may, may make that laser that be there be more tunable. So therefore, for metro application or campus application, I'm in the same form factor, but that laser is actually more flexible in terms of being able to give me better connectivity options. So therefore, I would expect to see that there would be cost variability relative to the tunability that you put within, within, that, within that laser. But from a standards point of view, uh, if you look at the specs from OIF, they're looking at A, it could be fixed, or it could be used for DWDM application. What the spec didn't say, at least when I looked at it, it didn't say anything about tunability, just so you can use it with DWM applications. And you may expect to see typically what we'd find earlier on, it would be actually a fixed optics, fixed color as an example. And you know, you'd expect over time tunability to be, to be added. But this is fantastic stuff, right? Because it may, therefore means that your line systems, your, your switching router infrastructure, you're getting better optimizations, you're getting the right level of density. So if you look at your colo today, where you have these big systems, these big DWDM systems, you'd expect them to be smaller because you can pack more uh, within, within those units. So therefore, there's an optimization for you across the board in terms of just system architecture and network architecture and overall, overall network, uh, network designs. So in for the larger data center, so the idea is that you know what we're saying, the statement on the on, on the bottom here that we'll expect to penetrate deep into the data center is just that you'll see for different applications where I'm going two kilometers, therefore you adjust the optic relative to the application you're looking at. And why is that possible? If you look at the current uh, DSP today for 400 gig FR4 from a specification, and you look at the 400 gig uh, coherent, they're very similar. I mean, not 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 much difference in terms of uh, in terms of components that goes that goes within them. So hence why you'd probably see that if we can normalize onto an optic uh, with, uh, with, a, with a type of optical capabilities that would give us flexibility from an application deployment point of view, then one would bet that there, hey, look, uh, there'll be continued development moving into, into this era going, uh, going forward. So this is a very busy picture, and you might say, where, where do I even start from a picture point of view? So, if you look at our ASIC, I mean, Mark talked about the fact that we're moving from uh, 25 gig thirties today to 50 gig thirties, and then we're moving to 100 gig thirties. You know, that's the that's the direction in terms of where we're going. So you look at your ASIC today. I can get max. You know, that the intention is to get you know 400 gig out. So this would be n by uh, it could be n by 25 today. It would be n by 50 tomorrow. N by 100 uh, going forward in terms of getting the bandwidth off the chip itself. And if I was to look at, let's say, if you were to draw a line here, and this was like, let's say, for example, a DCI box, let's say an NCS1K as an example, where on the receive side, I'll receive, I'll leverage the same client side optics, but then I'll have a current coherent DSP as an example that's driving today, we're doing 600 gig, but then you'd expect to see N by 400, so it'd be an 800 gig signal uh, with a single carrier or multiple carriers, or you'd be see a terabit signal with multiple different carriers leveraging some of the technologies I talked about, you know, leveraging flow, flex spectrum, Nyquist filtering, we didn't talk a whole lot about that going forward. But the idea is that you, 
you'd have higher capacity DWDM systems being able to support a lot of the bandwidth innovation on the, on the client side. So where we are today, I mean, by getting 400, you also have a derivative of getting 200 gigs as well. I don't think we, Mark, we didn't spend a lot of time on that. But from a future direction, we'll expect to see that in the distant future, I mean, beyond 2020 would be, would be 800 gig being, being looked at, or you may just see more of an optimization of 400 gig in terms of getting deployment and getting the cost, the cost down before, let's say, seeing 800. But you know, certainly, there's a focus around just getting these, these, these high speeds. From a, from a modulation point of view, I mean, certainly you'd see flexible modulation. We have, we have that today. Tunable modulation, we have that today. There's really more on the transmission systems. You wouldn't expect to see that in a 400 gig ZR kind of an optic because you know, that's just really a costly beast. So therefore, a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you right here, as an example, you'd see sitting like a transponder or a low cost uh, uh, DCI, uh, data center interco interconnect box that's driving into, into a line system, anybody's line system, you can leverage you know, an alien wavelength uh, type of an application. But the idea is that you'd be able to playing with the baud rate, going back to the picture that I showed you, uh, playing with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the modulation, doing a hybrid modulation, and be able to get flexibility and also be able to do channel bundling to be able to get the performance you're looking at. So on the client side, uh, on the client side you'll see uh, you know, the QSF BDD, um, possibly Co Kobo in, in the future or the integrated uh, optics solution. From a flexibility uh, perspective, um, FlexC been talked about. We haven't seen FlexC on the switching side. Um, the thought was that you probably may see it on your DCI system, on your data center interconnect system, or in your DWDM transmission system, because this is where your fiber is typically coming in and you're managing all the various fiber path. So if there's a wavelength failure, as an example, you want to adjust and, and certainly, so you'd have, uh, you'd probably see Flexi kind of showing up in probably some DCI, DCI, DCI boxes. So on the line side, we'd need the flexible modulation, again, in terms of the, the hybrid. And then just to provide the, the performance management, you'll see Flexo from, a, from an OTN. So you'll see where you can take flex, a Flexi signal that has the max side of the house mapped into a Flexo transmission, basically a G.709 wrapped signal, where that could be where your aggregate signal could be, uh, be distributed across n by 100 gig, as an example, um, being carried across the, in the infrastructure, and that would be treated as one aggregate signal. So the idea is that the, 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 uh, the, uh, the future direction is, is probably here relative to the line side, that you'll continue to see, continue to see more development on, on, on the client side in terms of just getting to mass volume on the 400 gig side and kind of moving forward. So, just kind of thinking about, so what do we expect to see? We expect to see a lot more increase on the ASIC side, uh, certainly increase on the, on the SERDI side, um, basically the same picture and just in a much, much more simpler, cleaner view and continue to increase across, uh, across the board in terms of being able to optimize the performance from end to end, from the switch to the, to the line system across, it, across the entire transmission infrastructure. So, what we'd expect to see, just as we kind of talked about, maybe leveraging coherent DSPs. So therefore, assuming this is the being of the clients out of my line system, uh, we're going to see coherent DSPs uh, being shipped into these boxes and being used into, uh, into multiple various, uh, various applications.